Good morning. Um, it's a great honor to stand before you this morning to talk about um, babies. But unfortunately, I wasn't given a topic to talk about. And, but since I know that today is for baby dedication, and I and asked the Lord, what am I going to talk about? He said, go and tell them about my son. Because I'm aware that there are people from different denominations and different faiths coming together. Uh, this is a Baptist environment. Uh, originally, I'm Pentecostal. And, um, and I'm aware of, you know, well, we are Christians, but whether we like it or not, there are denominations, which for me is not an issue. Um, but what is important, regardless of our, uh, our race, a nation, uh, a denomination, a profession, is the fact that the need for us to know who the Son of God is. That we are going to take home today. And as well, the Father will be dedicating babies today. If you don't have belief in Jesus, why would you want to dedicate your baby to Him? Alright? So this is just a connection, um, the the various things God told me. He said, just tell my people that if there is any focus, anything in the Bible, that we should spend our time on, particularly in this end time, is about my son. And that is Jesus Christ. And uh, in line with that, I would um, want to just briefly take us through the book of John. The book of John is very controversial. I mean, the gospel according to St. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four gospels. The book of Matthew presents Jesus as a king. If you look at Matthew chapter 1, you will see the genealogy of the king. And at the, and at the end of, it, uh, of the chapter, you will see that the kingly throne is pointing to Jesus. Luke, sorry, Mark, presents Jesus as a servant. And Luke presents Jesus as a son of, I mean, as, as a man. Why John presents Jesus as a son of God? Other religion, with due respect to them, they will not, they will not find anything, uh, they won't struggle with you with Mark. They'll say, yes, Jesus is the king of the Jew, fine. They will not struggle with you with the fact that Jesus is a man. Yes, he was a goodly man when he came. They won't struggle with you when you present him as a servant. Say, yes, it's a good example. But by the time he comes to John, they will say, no, they don't believe. They don't believe, they don't agree that a man born of a woman can be called the Son of God. But brethren, it is based on this that we are all seated here today. It is based on this fact that we are called ourselves Christians. And I've brought this message to you. I don't think I'll be coming here to tell you anything new. It's just to remind us of what we know already. Uh, the 21 chapters in the book of John is what every Christian should study. Case study it. Our children, we should teach them. Our youths, we should know it. Ma- families and marriages, man and woman, everybody should know. The church should know it. The group, I'm aware of um, that the church has fantastic group. Um, I think I, um, I, I, I fellowship with one of the groups twice uh, in uh, uh, Brother Sam, Sam, Sammy Charles' house, and where, that was where I met Paul. And it was just, it's just so good how we share together. But please don't let us forget the focus. That when we group together, yes, to ask one of, of, of our welfare, let us always remember that the studying of the Bible is paramount. And I pray that the heaven will open our eyes to these books in Jesus' name. Now, the book of John, as we may all know, is written by John himself. And the focus of this book is for the reader to see Jesus as the Messiah, and as a son of God. Let's open to John chapter 20. Those of us who have our Bible with us, let's open our Bible to um, John 20. If you are to take it from verses 30 to 31, it says, And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Talking about John writing down the gospel. So, but these are written, that is, the 21 chapters are written, why? That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and 
that is the Son of God. So the, the, the focus of the book of the author is that every reader should see Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, and as well as the Son of God. That believing you may have life in his name. That is the summary of Christianity. Believing in Jesus that leads to eternal life. Believing not in a man, not in a church, not in a movement, not in, in a denomination, but believing in Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God. And that belief will lead to eternal life. And, and, and I pray that as we day by day know Jesus, see him, love him and want him more, our belief will be real, which will influence our daily life, which will influence our environment. It will influence the people around us and the, and the, and the, and the various places that he will be leading us. Um, I, I want us to understand one thing, that the gospel of John is a history. It's, it has preaching in it. It has parable. And that it is written by Apostle John. Uh, history made us understand that it's around 85 to 95 AD. And that, as I've said, the purpose of the reading of the book is for the reader to believe in Jesus Christ. Um, as I also point out to the fact that when you read through the 21 chapters, there are two words, the belief and eternal life. In short, what I put down here is that belief appears 98 times in that book, and eternal life appears 36 times. Now, chapter 1. Chapter 1 actually tells us the characteristics of the Messiah. Now, if you open to John chapter 1 itself, the first five verses of John chapter 1 give us who we are talking about. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. He was, look at that, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was a light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. That is all about the book of John. That is our, our Messiah. That is our Savior. That is the focus of our worship, the focus of our tithing and offering, the focus of our coming to church, the focus of our going to house group, the focus of our preaching, the focus of people leaving their countries, coming to this part of the world to preach. Originally, I'm from Africa, although I'm British, but I'm an African uh, in England and now here. Um, the kind of ministry we do, we tailor it towards the indigent. We don't come here to build empire. We come here to tell the 10.5 million Hungarians about Jesus Christ. The reason why he came to the world. Why he died. Yes, when we preach to them, there's going to be a response. People will respond. Then, those who respond, it is not the duty of the church, Baptist, Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, to now mature those ones into Christianity. But originally, the focus of every missionary should be to preach. Tell the world about Jesus. Because it is the light. Alright, so the rest of chapter 1, actually, you will see that uh, John the Baptist was a witness. Alright, John witnessed, he said it because if you, if you reach through, it, it, yeah, John said, look, I've told you guys, I am not the Messiah. He is the Messiah. So when I was going through the uh, a book uh, 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 this morning again, uh, in verse 29, the next day, chapter 1, John saw, not John the author, John the Baptist, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the saints of the world. Remember, he came as a baby. When you say you are dedicating your baby, be careful, be careful. What you are saying is that you are giving your baby to God. And God can use your baby. You have no say anymore. When Anna gave Samuel to Haley, that was a deal. And Samuel became the first prophet in Israel. So when you dedicate your baby to the Lord, you are saying, Lord, thank you for giving me this baby. I'm giving it back to you. Use it according to your will. Trust me, there's nothing that can be fantastic as that. So John here saying, baby Jesus that was born of Mary, now he is the Lamb of God. And what is his duty? He takes away 
the saints of the world. All right, because of our limited time, and uh, because um, I, I'm aware of, of time, which is uh, very important, um, before I go to the next point, this Jesus, I put down here that Jesus is more than a mere man. In the beginning was the Word, as we were told, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Likewise, the Word himself is Jesus Christ, who became flesh and dwelt among us. That's where the name Hebrew word Emmanuel comes up. Then this Jesus is the infinite God. Well, some, some Christian denominations don't believe that. Well, I'm not the author of John. All right? So I'm sure uh, I will leave that to you and the Holy Spirit. Now, chapter 2 to chapter 12 of John um, explains Jesus' ministry. Um, between chapter 2 and chapter 12, he met with religious leaders, particularly in John chapter 3, Nicodemus. All right? And in chapter 4, he met with a woman at the well. It's so fantastic. Those two dialogues, every Christian should case study those dialogues. When you case study them, one by one, what was Jesus trying to achieve? He was talking to the religious people. Because, well, because of my ministry, I meet some so-called ministers and pastors. Those ones are always the, the most difficult to, to relate with. They will tell you, no, we know about it. No, 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 no. I say you don't know about it. You only know a denomination. Do you know Jesus? At the end of the discussion, particularly in England, they will say, oh, okay, Michael, I think, thank you for telling me this. I mean, there is need for us to promote Jesus. What Jesus was trying to tell Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, is not about your religion structure. Nicodemus was one of the highest over in, in those days. And, and the, with all his uh, 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 rituals and all this theology, he went to Jesus. Jesus Christ told him, my friend, you must be born again. So to enter into the kingdom of God, dear brothers and sisters, you must be born again. There should be a day in your life when you can say you are a Christian. That was the essence of John chapter 3. Now, John chapter 4, a case study. Now, Jesus Christ, not with a religious person, but with a prostitute. A woman that ordinarily, when she comes to church or to some churches, you will say, oh, don't sit with her. Why? Because she has married five times. She's useless. She's this. She's that. But Jesus approached her and gave her eternal life. After the discussion, the woman became born again. She went back to Samaria and became an evangelist. All right? Now, the, the, the miracles, Jesus did seven miracles to point to the reader that he is the Son of God. Number one, he changed water to wine. That is in, I think that is in uh, uh, John chapter, that was the first miracle in John chapter 2. All right? So, he studied the miracle at your convenience. As a family, gather your family together and just study the, the miracle. Now, the second miracle, because of our time, is um, when Jesus healed in John chapter 4. He healed the nobleman with his son. You see, that healing was one thing. But it's, it's not really the healing that was the focus. It is the heart of the man that was broken. Two miracles. He healed the son, yes. But after that, he the, the, you know, when, okay, we are talking about parents dedicating babies. You know what happens when our babies are sick? Oh, the father will be devastated. The mother will, everybody will be disorganized. You know, yes, but the, the baby is just sick. That tells you the connection. And Jesus healing that baby healed the man's broken heart. That is the ministry of the gospel. The gospel. When you believe Jesus, the Son of God, he will heal your broken heart. Now, that was the second, uh, second miracle. And the third miracle is the... Um, um, the healing of uh, the man by the Podest in John chapter 5. That, that man, nobody n knows the cause of the sickness, but for 38 years or thereabout, he was sick. And Jesus went to him and healed him. And do you know the healing, that particular healing, led to a problem for Jesus and the Pharisees. In verse 18 of John chapter 5, therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him. Because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, uh, making himself equal with God. That statement is connected to the miracle of healing. All right? That's awesome to know. Then this, uh, the other miracle, the, the fourth miracle, is in John chapter 6, the feeding of the 5,000. This shows that only the Son of God has the right, has the power to feed. People, it, it can, it can, feel. for me as a missionary, sometimes things are tough. Sometimes there's no money. Sometimes there is no food. 
because my wife and my children are in England and some, sometime I will be in a village in, in Hungary, somewhere in, in the remote, no food. I just remember, Lord, you fed 5,000 with five, uh, 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 two fishes and five loaves. And all of a sudden, it just, miracle will just come. All right, this, 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 these are miracles we should case study, we should make reference to. All right, so that tells you that Jesus is a son of God. Now, another miracle is in the same chapter, chapter John chapter 6, the fifth miracle, Jesus walked on the sea. In verse 9, uh, sorry, verse 19 of John chapter 6. So when they had rolled down about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Alright, so that is the uh, fifth miracle. I know I'm uh, far uh, beyond time. Now, um, the sixth miracle, which is also very important for us is in John chapter 9, the healing of a man born blind. This, as I said, are miracles that prove that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the last of the miracle as recorded by John, in John is in John chapter 11. This is the paramount. Lazarus died four days in the grave. Who dare, who dare accept the Son of of God. I mean, if you can study that miracle, what, 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 what the message is trying to tell us is that Jesus has, is the only one that has the right to say that four day hold, I mean, somebody that is dead, four day buried, can come back to life. Alright? And I pray that as we are, we'll be going home today, not only to, with the memories of the food and the dedication, I want to arouse your interest in studying the Word of God. Alright? Another thing is that the Lord Jesus Christ claims that he, is, he himself is God. And in John chapter 10 verse 30, when he says, I and the Father are one. See it from that perspective. Now Jesus also applies to himself the Jehovah statement, I am, as found in Exodus 3.14. You know, it was only God that said, I am. But Jesus Christ tried to tell his audience that, look, I am. I am. Now that was when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. I am the door. I am the bread of life. All these point to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. Now, well, the event of uh, chapter 13 to chapter uh, 17 occurs less than 24 hours before the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, they describe the Lord's Supper, taught important topics during this time, and uh, he prayed for himself, for his disciples, and for all future believers. Now, one of the prayers, let's quickly go to John 17 briefly before I'll be rounding up. In John chapter 17, this is one of the prayers that Jesus prayed for us. And I hold on to it dearly. And from this prayer, I actually came up with a book, my first book, 10 Things You Must Know About Jesus. That's a, just a, a 10 fact that anybody should know about Jesus. is in Dutch. Is in uh, French, is in English, and is in uh, Hungarian as well. In John chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may, may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Verse 3, and this is eternal life. This is a very, very important verse. That you should go home with. And this is eternal life. That they might know you. That you know God. And the only true God. And who? Jesus Christ. Whom you are saint. The knowledge of God and Jesus Christ is very, very important. Lastly, in John chapter 21. That's the last chapter of the book. In verse 25. John 21:25. He said, "And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that the author, that even the word itself could not contain the book that will be written." That tells you that there are other things. There were other things rather that happened. But as far as he is concerned, those miracles, those uh, miracles, and those statements. Those records, he, John the Beloved, wants you and I, the reader, to see Jesus as the Messiah and the Son 
of God. When you believe, you will understand coming to church. When you believe, you will understand giving. When you believe, you will understand what it means as a Christian father to love your wife, as a Christian wife to submit scripturally to your husband. As Christian parents, you will understand what it means to uh, lead your children to the Lord. As elders, pastors, Christians, we understand. It, 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 you see, denomination will not matter to you if you believe. You will be able to give selflessly to the cause of the gospel. And I pray that as we step into this intimate relationship with Jesus, heaven will open, we will know him more, and we will become useful in the kingdom of God. Let's bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for giving me this golden privilege to stand before these beautiful people today to talk about Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our Savior and our Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that may your Holy Spirit teach us more, reveal more of yourself unto us. May we know Jesus. May our belief lead us to a more intimate relationship with you and give us grace to serve. Thank you, sweet Father, because I know you've answered. In Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>